Well, next up, we have our last input before we can all go into the lunch break by Professor Dr. Rob von Tilder. He's a professor of International Business Society Management here at the Rotterdam School of Management, and he will be giving a talk about cross-sector partnerships. So welcome and a big applause. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was sitting over there and I was, I think, experiencing the same thing you do after six speakers. <laughs> what about this seventh? Where's the lunch? And actually the bonus is after my speech there's lunch. So um, I'm really happy with this occasion. So. Um, when a couple of years ago, Irene approached me that that might be interesting to sort of uh, look at Tina de Moor from Utrecht University and, and the team of, of Kunos as well, to bring in, I would call the bottom-up approach, the, the community approach into a mainstream business school. Uh, I, I couldn't imagine that we would be here today. And actually today, I'm the only one now that represents sort of the mainstream business school. But I would be happy to do that, hopefully also with the idea that uh, even mainstream business, meaning the big business also, is not a lost cause. So let, let me try in the next 13 and a half minutes to convince you that there's something going on there at that site and, and that there is a management perspective. So this is mainstream also talking about management and this is about partnership portfolio management. So let, let's start at the global scale. Uh, of course, we are big business, so World Economic Forum. And they just said, this is a fragmented world and we need collaboration also. Uh, and uh, well, it started in 2000, uh, by the way, by Jim Austin from Harvard Business School, also mainstream. And then he talked about the, uh, the, the collaborative paradigm of the 21st century. But fast moving forward, we are now in 2015 at the Sustainable Development Goals, and suddenly uh, this whole idea of partnering or collaboration becomes a paradigm, and a paradigm shift also in the thinking on a global scale on what is sustainable development. These are the Sustainable Development Goals, but they're based on five principles. People, planet, prosperity, so not profit, peace, and partnering. And partnering then as the facilitator of everything else. So that, that sort of created legitimacy on a global scale supported by big business also, that saw a business opportunity, by the way, a business case and big governments, and, but also big NGOs, to work together on this global agenda. So there's a logic to this. And of course, the old African proverb said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to come far, go together. Or at the COP28, uh, 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 what was it, COP26, I I'm trick keeping track of count, uh, is David Attenborough basically say, if working apart, we are a force powerful enough to destabilize our, our planet, surely working together, we are powerful enough to save it, again, at the global scale. And another one is, if we are facing all those wicked problems, we know that also, and this is also uh, some of the insights, we, wicked problems require wicked solutions or wicked approaches. And what is the part of the approach? It's collaborative. You cannot do it alone. The biggest companies in the world say, we cannot do it alone. And many, of course, the critics would say, yeah, Shell says they cannot do it alone. Basically, they don't want to do it anyway. So I would like to draw your attention that it is not a lost cause. We can talk about individual companies, but I will give you some examples. So the example is, for instance, there's lots of business school thinking that basically say there's a collaborative advantage. Even the profit-oriented sector knows that they have to build up new business models. They have to do it with others. We call that cross-sector collaboration. So cross-sector meaning the profit sector, the market, civil society, the community sector, and the state. So when we talk about then sustainable development goals, we talk about balanced societies. And we are trying to figure out how that works. And we can talk about community-based economics because I really love the term. But there's also something else that's big business, and we have to sort of try to figure out how they can be combined. Otherwise, one of the biggest fears that I have is that you can build up communities, uh, fair BNB and whatever, but that big business still will prevail. They have to also change their strategy. And this is what we're working on. So that's why I call it, I don't think it is a lost cause to do that, but it requires something. So what does it require? It requires that the first time we look at all those initiatives and say, we see roundtables, we see 
uh, councils, action network, compacts. We see initiatives. We see 10,000 public-private partnerships and 100,000 plus communities or, or, or cooperatives. So the question then is, how can we bring them together and make them effective also for the common cause? And this is what we try to do, do uh, research. So I founded the Partnership Resource Center uh, uh, 13 years ago. We had platforms also, the PEP initiative, promoting effective partnering. And then we come up with sort of studies. We start, of course, uh, we are a business school, so we start with big business, the top 100. And we already saw that most of the big companies they are partnering in order to become more purpose-driven. Uh, uh, it, it, it's controversial in the sense that many of them just do it because they, they want to look good. But some of them, already in 2010 when we did the study, wanted also to do that because they saw purpose. They saw also, like Feike Siebesma of DSM, for instance, said, in a system that fails, I cannot do business. So there is a sort of intrinsic motivation also of companies. And then we went on how to make that work, the front runners, then we looked at the largest NGOs, and then this year, together with a co-author, former students also of, of our department, we made this big book on principles of sustainable business. And actually what we found then, and the, the final chapter on that book is basically, how are we getting together all those uh, uh, ideas on how partnering, also from big companies, how that works. So it, for instance, we know that trust building is more important than trust. You don't partner because you trust each other, but you trust each other because you partner. And why do you partner then? Because there is a common purpose or a common problem. So trust building is more important than trust. I, I have to explain it all the time to policymakers. So we, well, we only partner because we, we trust each other. Well, if you really do that, then you don't have to partner because then, anyway. And there is no common problem. Sharing languages is important. What is value? So, and it, it's important to, 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 and it was reiterated also in many of the presentations, we need to develop concepts also that we share. Uh, coalition of willing, yeah, well, that's nice, but the coalition of the need that I want. So what we found also, research after research, and I summarized it in a very simple thing, two thirds of the partnership projects fail. I, I, th I actually think it is an underestimation. And part of that is because many of the things that are called a partnership are not a partnership. I have companies that say, I have 30,000 partners, and they mean I have suppliers in a market relationship, and we call them partners. Yeah, well, that's a different story. So the, the, the minority also of partnerships are really fit, meaning you set up a partnership for a common cause. So it is important also to understand what is the fit of your partnership with, between your partnership and the cause. So what we say is, we need partnership portfolio management. And that is the thing that we have been developing over the last 10 years also in, in our, uh, in our uh, studies at the Partnership Resource Center with many, many uh, uh, projects that we did. And on the website of, the, of this book that I just reiterated, we have a lot of cases. So I just pick out for the last couple of minutes. How many minutes do you have? Minus three? <laughs> no, oh, okay, so, okay, two cases. Uh, 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 I, 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 an interesting case, there are no best practice cases, and a failed case from the perspective of a big company. So Unilever and TNT. So what, what about this? This is the, the, the partnership portfolio. We draw these maps huh, all the time from Unilever in 2010. And that was the time that Paul Pullman, the, the CEO of Unilever, started this uh, sustainable living plan. And they developed a, an approach with partnership, with, World, Food for, uh, with World, uh, World Wildlife Fund for Nature, with NGOs, with governments, with, gov uh, with, uh, with universities and the like. You don't have to read it, by the way, but it's just a matter of it looks complex. But it's not, actually. So we started to analyze this, and this is just a slice of that. They identified the key commodity chains. Then they identified the, the, the issues that they were facing. In this case, it was about health, hygiene, climate, fisheries, and they started to develop partnerships. So partnerships are not just collaboration, but they're institutionalized forms of trying to bring people together, just, just at one moment, but continuous. And actually, that was quite a success. And we can, we can have a long discussion on whether Unilever actually walked the talk, but it was a success in a, in a, in, in a, in a surprising way. And this is just uh, 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 the, the, uh, the cases explained on the website in more detail. But the surprising way 
is when Paul Polman himself, when he, he, he finished his CEO, uh, he wrote this book, Net Positive Change. And the introduction of the book says, when mayo beat ketchup. So again, I hope you don't mind. I, I know the audience, probably 90% is more into the community base, but this is big business. So mayo, mayonnaise, uh, beat ketchup. And mayo is Unilever. Uh, and ketchup is Kraft, yes. Uh, and Kraft had a hostile takeover bid for Unilever, uh, uh, and it failed. And it failed. Why did it fail? Well, not because Kraft couldn't take over Unilever, but because Unilever was safeguarded by, and that is why he calls it one plus one makes 11, by the stakeholders around Unilever. That were institutional investors, government, trade unions, NGOs, and the like. They sort of made it sure that Unilever, on the basis of its sustainability process, of course, would be uh, safeguarded. Uh, well. It's nice also that the book that we just released also is also supported by Paul Pullman, and actually he wrote an introduction, and then he said, this whole idea of partial portfolio management, uh, that is interesting. We, we will also, we think that it was a big part of our strategic survival. So the second example, this is one of the, the first big uh, partnerships in the world, well, TNT, uh, allied with the World Food Program, and both of them said, okay, TNT is about logistics, World Food Program is about food, so we have a food problem in the world, by the way, not because there's not enough food, but it is unequally distributed, so we have a business case. This is how business look, looks at this. So what did they do? They allied with each other. So this is the network, TNT, World Food Program, and they allied with each other in order to make uh, the world a better place. So what happened? Well. The World Food Program used the uh, alliance to create a bigger portfolio with all sorts of other players. And you can see that already more than 2,500 partnerships with local NGOs and the like on the basis of competence, we call it management competency of partnership portfolio management. TNT, on the other hand, just did one project with the World Food Program, actually very much also related to the leader, the CEO. They included it then in a management training program, leadership program, which was cool. Uh, managers at TNT really liked to go to uh, South Sudan in order to figure out how we could sort of save the local population by effective logistics. On the other hand, it was not really included in the integrated in the company, and it was not part of a bigger portfolio. So, um, what happened? When Peter Bakker, he was the CEO of TNT, left TNT, the program collapsed. So, when World Food Program now is looking at this, they have a wide portfolio of management. They have professionals. They have all sorts of other people that are able to do this. Now, mind you, by the way, I'm not saying this is perfect. It's all work in progress, and we are still in a fragmented world, and we still face hunger and, and poverty and all sorts of other problems. But the, the, the wicked problems here are more effectively addressed by Unilever than by TNT. Why? And then we get to the management point of view. And this is the main statement that I would like to make. Because Unilever developed a, a partnership portfolio management that was independent of the CEO. It was integrated in the company. It also had a broad portfolio of issues that really the company had. And it was about education, training, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas TNT only had a program that was linked to a, a, the legitimacy of one leader, not linked to its core business, not linked also to the core countries, which, meant, which meant also that when the CEO went away, the program collapsed. So this is about continuity also of partnerships, also linked to the bigger issues. So in that sense, uh, Unilever developed a better partnership portfolio management strategy than TNT. However, read also the book where you can see that Paul Pullman also doesn't say that he is perfect, not at all. Doesn't say that Unilever is there, not at all, but it's what we call transitory strategies. And this for me, from a mainstream point of view, is important. And there, of course, it's great to see that community economics, partnering, Airbnb, the big companies with their, with their portfolio strategies now come together in, uh, in one department, in one business school. I'm really happy about that. I, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, 
how do you say that, uh, colonial uh, in that sense, uh, with lots of interesting researchers and also guests. So uh, also on behalf of the Rosen School of Management, I think uh, I'm really happy that Tini is with us, that the whole team is there, and that we have a captive audience here. But I won't keep you now much longer because you need to go to lunch. Thank you very much. Thank you.